All right, back another edition of Derailed. This is Harry Mays. I'm Aton Chander. We are at the Mays facility, the Mays Mansion. Lair. Lair. Yeah. Now, what episode is this? Are we 14 or 15? I think I lost track. I think it's 14. Okay. Because we had one gap where we were down at the Super Bowl yeah. and we were doing a bunch of things with 97.3. So we're back on track now. Last week and this week, mm-hmm. now we we have the great production of Chris Gregory's back here. Right. Clutch shots in the house. Exactly. Not my little mini, whatever the hell. Well, we did that last time. <laughs> right, place. right. Yeah, yeah. That little Get thing. A pinch, that yeah. Yeah. No, it's fine. It's what I use for fan cred. Right. right. Speaking of which, we'll be back Thursday night. That's tonight with fan cred. All right. right. No Embiid. No Embiid, yeah. and that's going to change some things. But we're great when it comes to a blowout scenario. And maybe this actually will make it a little closer because mm-hmm. you don't have Embiid. Speaking of which, as far as just moving away from Embiid for a second, but we'll get back to him coming up in a minute or two. The fatigue has set in. Like, I don't give a shit anymore if Bryce Harper's a Philly, if he's a Giant, if he's a Yankee. I don't care. And baseball blew a big opportunity because I would have cared about a month ago. Well, yeah, I mean, it's just been dragging on and on. I thought, Nothing's changed. I thought that this week, you know, I, I figured one of these guys, if not both, would sign this week because you had this window where baseball could have had all the attention on itself yep. before the NBA gets back to rolling, which right. is absolutely tonight and then this weekend. They get going great guns again on into the playoffs. And there was a window after the All-Star game where Tuesday, Wednesday, you could have owned – the media, I agree. television, print, you name it, whatever it is, the blogosphere would have been all over both Machado and Harper signing. One guy signs, and he signed in freaking San Diego, which if I hear one more guy say how fucking good the Padres farm system is, no. I'm going to puke. He's got a year, uh, he's got an out after five years. Anyway. Right. He'll be okay. traded in two. No question about it. He'll play know. two years as a Padre be dealt. Right, he's going to get great weather, right. good for him. 81 games in paradise it in happens. front of nobody right. uh, with no media pressure. And it's a hard ballpark to hit home runs in. So it good is. luck with that. Right. But uh, him not going to the Phillies really wasn't a surprise to me because I kind of was out on Machado with the Phillies for quite some time now. I've been well, you were. Harper. You personally. Yes. But the reports were recycled and constantly thrown at us. And it's one thing to say, well, if you don't like a TV show or a movie, you don't have to watch it. Mm-hmm. But when you work, and forget work, when you live in the realm of sports, like you and I and so many others who watch and listen to us do, you can't get away. You can't mute everybody. Right. You can't mute every single baseball reporter that you follow. It's impossible. So you got inundated with the same crap over and over again. Yeah. And that's what I think tuned me out. So you already made this mental decision to move away from Machado. i that. Well, yeah, yeah, I I, I know that. I know that. (laughs) Trust me, I get it. But I think you get brought back, maybe not you personally, but you get brought back in this thing when you see the latest Heyman that Mm. comes out that says, you know, and they're also still in the lead for Machado after that little throw in. Right. Or or the mystery team. And then the mystery team became what the Giants. Right. San Francisco and all that. You know, he he loves San Francisco. (laughs) Yeah. Who doesn't? Okay. You know, I'm sort of a lot of people like San Diego. Well, what's true? I'm sort of like you in this respect where, at this point, I, I almost don't even care if they get him. I'm already kind of thinking, if they don't get him, who will they, you know, what pitcher can they sign? Yeah, you know, cause for I mean, the Phillies, the, the, yeah. Yeah, with the Phillies. The Real Muto signing was great, or the move was great. Um, you know, Segura, that's a, that's a great move, in, in my view. Um, you know, McCutcheon, McCutcheon is still think solid, yeah. Left, you know, and is, is a good Great in the locker guy. room, sure. Exactly, so... I, you know, the, the relief of what Robertson they got. I mean, they've done some really nice things. Does it not sour it a little, though, if they don't get either of the two guys that yes. you were told for three they're and a half months said, they're in the lead? Up, they have to get one of them. Yeah. That's always been my contention. But you put every single egg in the Harper basket. And you moved on from Machado. I did. And throw in the whole fact that the owner, you know, a while back said, we're going to spend stupid money. Right. Right. Three hundred million dollars is stupid money. Well, that's three sixty, three eighty, yeah, whatever, uh, it, is. whatever it comes at that point. That's that's Do you really the. Really need another forty million on top of your three hundred? No, but when it comes to ego and Boris, who yeah. wants to squeeze every single penny, that that's what I get. I just look at this and I think to myself, all right, baseball. The the lost opportunity, I think, in the details of it, was 
when the signing could have happened. And you know what? These things, I get it. Sometimes they drag on. Mm -hmm. But baseball, and again, I, I am also going to separate. Scott Boris doesn't work for Major League Baseball. Yeah. So Scott Boris is working for his client, and his client is expecting the best deal. He basically runs Major League Baseball. Well, he does. Yeah. He does like Rich Paul runs the NBA. Yeah. But in this particular case, the NBA and the NFL can afford that. Mm -hmm. My Perfect example. The NBA can afford Anthony Davis not being traded and still be the main subject of conversation at the All-Star game. Sure. They, in fact, moved the trade deadline up so they could avoid this stuff. In fact, it backfired because the sport's so popular. Right. Baseball needed an offseason in which everybody can say, wow, look at the Phillies, the Padres, look at these big signings. Because when you start with pitchers and catchers, the reality is, is that the majority of people that are interested in their teams are now more interested and mostly interested in their teams. Like the average Braves fan isn't going to give a damn so much that Harper signed with... The Giants. Exactly. Yeah. And Machado's a Padre right. as they would in the offseason. No, you're right. It's become a regionalized sport over the right. last couple so of years. Right. So that's where the offseason, you take advantage of it. Right. And here's the other thing. I hear people say, well, you know, maybe they're just trying to delay the signings because they don't want to go to spring training. Since when did fucking spring training become what? training camp in football right. that you really didn't right. look to, you know, in the middle of summer, sweating your balls off, you know, right. on some college football field. In a no, dorm. Is now, <laughs> now being in Clearwater Seriously. during March. I don't know and when that, I don't know when that happened. It's no. such a labor-intensive thing, yeah. this spring training. Bryce long Harper's toss. turned into a 35-year-old hey, defensive lineman. Fucking long toss. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's a joke. At, at what point would you try to stray? Yeah, it, the, well, that's the thing. Like, it's illogical it is. for somebody to use that as an excuse to not show up. But the so, longer this goes on, the more I think the Phillies don't get him. Well, I, I thought it was the opposite in which it's just a matter of Boris trying to squeeze out the last penny, throwing in teams. And that's why you get these caveats in the report that say the Phillies are still in the lead. Yeah. But you think that it's that there's actually something breaking down with negotiations? Well, I, I, or were know. they never I, in the lead? I think the Phillies have given their best shot, and I think that Boris is holding out for something else. Yeah, like from three, somewhere else. 340. I think it's from somewhere else. Stanton makes 320, right? Yeah, I, I think so. So you, you put 340 on the table, who says no? Mm -hmm. like what's wrong with putting $340 million on the table and saying, I'll lock up Bryce Harper? Well, at some point, if, if I'm the player, I just want to go play. Well, I mean, maybe, I, maybe I, you want to I sit want out to for spring play. training. No, I mean, I want to go play. I want to get in with whoever my new teammate. If he is indeed going somewhere else, what if he signs with the Nationals? Well, again. He still could. He could. Right? He could go back if the Nats put up the but money. If I'm going to a new team, I'd want to get there and let, let's get going. I'm, I'm a baseball player. Do you think Gabe Kapler? Side, I'm a baseball player. I want, I want to go play. Do you think he has any reservations about going down to spring training with Gabe Kapler? No, I don't. You know, you don't think I there think, are think, any weird idiosyncratic habits that he's trying to stay away from? If anything, with Harper being there, there's going to be so much more attention focused on the Phillies yeah. that we're going to find out even more about Gabe Kapler than maybe we really want to know. Who's the first guy that Harper goes after on this team? He's going to go after somebody on this team. Uh, Who do you think is maybe somebody completely unsuspecting or somebody who's just mouthing and, and like gets into it? Herrera. Right? You think Herrera? Go after a double Herrera. You know what? That's not that's not bad. <laughs> I'm telling you, that, that would actually be pretty interesting. Herrera loafing something yeah, out, right? right? Or just making a or bonehead just, play. Yeah, just makes a bonehead right. play in the outfield right. or something. And, and Harper's over there in, in right field, left field, wherever he's playing, and just gives him one of these. And all of a sudden, that starts. Like, now, couldn't you see that, too, where it's it's like a stretch in which Herrera makes a bonehead play, Harper goes after him. Mm -hmm. It's the day before, like an off day or travel day. So it gives everybody here, all the talking heads, two days. And then Herrera comes out and goes four for four. And it just fuels this whole thing. Like, I could do totally oh, see yeah. that. It'd be so, great drama. Yeah, absolutely. See, that, that's another reason why Harper is better than Machado. Machado's not going to do any of that. No, well, Machado might, you know, spike somebody or, you know, do something that's a little bit dirty. Yeah, but hopefully not your own. Right. Not against his own guys. Spring, that's know. why you keep him out of spring training. Right. Right, in that regard. You move him out. All right, we, we started, and you mentioned Joel Embiid. Let's get yeah. to the knee issue. So, for me... And I'll just get where, where I look at this whole thing. You've got damage control. That's why Brett Brown is coming out saying that, you know, he needs to play as opposed to not to help the knee rest. It doesn't make any sense. But what comes down to it for me is 
He wanted to, he was hurt before the All-Star game. He wanted to play in the All-Star game. The NBA, the All-Star game is looked at as something much more special with the players than any of the other games. Not that the other people don't care about the, the games. I didn't watch one second no, of the weekend. No, but the players, when it comes to the actual All-Star game, mm-hmm. it's a rite of passage for players. It's a, yeah, it's it's a moment of... It is. Yeah, it is. And, and, and they, they take they, it to heart. They and they split up these teams where Giannis... Is and you're out there playing with these yeah, guys. Yeah, and, yeah. and you know what? That's where these friendships we laugh and joke about it but there's something to it oh yeah so you're not going to tell joel and b exactly but you're not going to tell joel and b not to go or not to play no that's just no, that's unrealistic a, that's a no win it, it, they'd like to but they can't. To, but you can't you're not you're not gonna doesn't matter if the guys like the celtics kyrie irving shouldn't have played in the all-star right. game he was out there playing yeah. because it's understood that you're not going to tell these guys what to do i think that's what this whole thing comes down to People may not realize how special the All-Star game was to Joel Embiid. So they're like, oh, well, he should have rested. That, there's your week of rest. It's unrealistic. It is. It is. It totally is. You just hope that this, you know, they say there's nothing structural going on. It's more or less just an abundance of caution, which is what we've experienced since Joel became a 76. Yeah. This whole thing, uh, whether it was legit- the legitimate injury or not. You know, am I kind of bummed that he's going to be on the shelf for the week? Yeah, I was really. I missed the NBA during the last six or seven days. I missed the Sixers right. more than I really missed the NBA. Well, it's not like you don't have three other guys to watch. No, I know, but I, you know, he's, you know, he's the centerpiece. Yeah, but the these three guys could use some time to play together as well. Well, to play together, but if they play together and then you interject him back into the lineup and things don't look so good, I mean, it's got to look good with him. Yeah, I think I, mean, you know. I think it's easier. As crazy as this sounds, I think it's easier to integrate him than because of more pick and rolls and pick and pops than it is with Simmons. I think the issue is as much as Simmons is a facilitator, the defenses play so much different with Simmons on the floor than they do with Embiid. Embiid, they can, you know they'll double or they'll get cooked doing a single. Mm-hmm. Whereas Simmons, they can sag, and sometimes that makes it more difficult for other people around them. All I'm saying though is that. I, I get where you're at, and I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm not disagreeing with your sentiment. It's just I think that we have to come to this realization the guy's going to miss 10-plus games a year. Mm-hmm. Like, he's not going to play no, right. 80 he's games a year. Game and you know what? I don't want him playing yeah, 80 okay. games a year. As long as he's ready in April. Yeah. You know, Shaq please. was dominating in the playoffs, playing 66 games. Yeah, you're right. Give me that. Like, give me 70, 71 games. I'm good. Except was that Shaq in his mid-20s, yes. early 20s? That's Lakers Shaq. Like, a lot of people okay. don't realize okay. that. You go back, and he was taking games off because he realized, like, hey, first off, we've got a really good team. Yeah. Second, it's about conservation. It's preserving yeah. the body. I'm not talking about the big Aristotle in Boston. Right. I'm talking about Shaq. Or Cleveland. Or that, Cleveland well, too, he, right? I think he was better in Cleveland. Uh, he was on that team that made the finals. No, it's hot like, in Cleveland. So that's the TV show. Is that what it is on yeah. the TV land? Yeah, Betty White's in that. Yep. Show. And then is it Kramer in that show too? I'm not sure. Is he on? I think show? so. I think Kramer. Valerie Bertinelli's in that show. From. Remember uh, Mrs. Van Halen? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Man, they're pulling all the people out. I'll tell you what. I'm pretty you sure. You need to get on that show. I could. That's yes. probably the easiest How many television. Fucking shows are you doing Listen, right now? that's easier to get on than any other show that I'm on right now. That's probably the easiest television show to get on. Uh huh. Speaking of which, I, I this came up yesterday when I was on with Gil. There's this show, Mike, uh, Mike Gill, right, 97.3 ESPN, where you can hear this as well as branded sports. Do you, it, I think it's um, it's something in 60. Chris, do you know this show? It's like something in 60. It's on, I think, Discover. Sixers in 60? No, trust me. It's not, not Devon Given. Six, that that's must listen, Devon <laughs> Given, Sixers in 60 love on The Devon. Fanatic. No, this is about like in in 60 or something like that where they take regular citizens, right, law-abiding citizens, and they put them behind bars as undercover for 60 days to try to weed out corruption in prison. And I'm thinking to myself... Are you worried about corruption in prison? Well, well, well there's a lot. I I'd mean, it's, it's rampant. in the prison than out of the prison. <laughs> At this okay. point, man... I, I, they do whatever the hell they want in there. That line is blurred, right? Well, no, there's, there's also, like, guard and, and like, CO-type stuff, as sure. well as there is prisoner yeah, and, and crime and drugs. Drug but, but think about... And then at the end of the slug of what it is, it's like... Watch as these normal citizens undergo horrific conditions. And I'm thinking to myself, like, you can't have it both ways. 
It's either a, a game show in which people are trying to survive prison for 60 days, or this is legit. They're going undercover for 60 days trying to expose something. And then I'm thinking to myself, like, who in their right mind would do this? If you got paid enough, you'd do no, it. No, the, these... You think you there's oh, you'd a price? Be in prison. No, I wouldn't. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. You would immediately have no, I wouldn't. the whole place wired in about two. Three days. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Yeah, you'd be aligned with this gang, and then you'd be dealing to this gang. Oh, it'd be you'd be fabulous. I, I trust me. There's, Chris, do you know the, Do you know the show? Yeah, sixty days in. Sixty days in. Sixty days in. I'm telling 60 you. Sixty days in the hole. I, there, there is nothing real about right. this. Nobody is volunteering to go in prison because they want to undo or uncover some sort of corruption. Like, that ain't happening. Maybe somebody, you know, owes a bet that they can't pay off or uh, something along those lines. Yeah. But I can't see. You going to watch this show? Maybe they took Duke minus the nine last night. <laughs> like, like you I did. did. Yeah. Yes. And that was the right side. Well, you saw way. Zion. If Zion plays. They blow out Carolina by 15. Correct. Right? Correct. Yeah. Well, that's going to hurt. joke. I mean, he literally blew a tire. He did. Like, we use that, com that, Those that Nikes, saying man. all yeah. the time. He literally blew a tire. The sneaker, he just blew out of his Nikes. That, that was a nightmare for Nike last night. Yeah, you got to think. I mean, seriously. Terrible, terrible marketing, right? Jesus. Meanwhile, you got uh, Air Jordan on the other side, you know, with his with his brand. Saying, right. Mm, yeah. Should have been wearing my stuff. Exactly right. Right. Yeah. So, as for the people that didn't see it, oh. he basically and, and here's the thing: he's not out indefinitely. No. It's but not. It could have been bad. It could have been worse. But it also people were criticizing. I saw just because everybody likes to criticize something. Sure. It's not like he was walking around with his laces untied. Mm -mm. That, right. I mean, yeah. th this was not some. 13 year old kid walking down the street to the park no. like I used to do and have my laces untied so I can slide into my sneakers. It looked like he was in slides. Yeah. You know, with the way the shoe came undone and, and it blew up. That's a good like example 30, you get. 33 seconds into the game, you literally, and I was really looking forward to that game. Like, yeah. I think it's the greatest rivalry in all of sports. Forget about college, professional, basketball, baseball. I don't care. That, to me, is the greatest rivalry in all sports. Oh, come on. Delivers. Better than the Eagles-Cowboys? Yes, it is better than the Eagles-Cowboys. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. It is. Okay. <laughs> better than Vladimir Klitschko and Who? Riddick Bowe? I mean, that was, a, that was a tough one back then. By the way, where were you going with the 60, uh, 60 days in thing or whatever? It started where somewhere you? with... Where, where How did you get on that? Because you brought up something about reality show we were talking about Embiid the all-star game yeah. something got into the reality show mm -hmm. and at that point that's where it clicked so in my head yeah but I'm telling you it, it made no sense to me this show does not exist in my brain they can lie to me all they want but that's it it just it was born off Embiid I don't know and you brought up something you bring things up yeah and then I just that jogs things in your head well yeah because I I'm, I need to be prodded but I have like this big encyclopedia yeah. I just have trouble accessing it I got you so you're great because you bring up random stuff and then it'll go oh yeah letter E yeah. and then and then I'll be like oh yeah you remember this thing like do you remember Klitschko and Riddick Bo I you know I once met Riddick Bo did you yeah poor guy man so. We were at, it was me and Schwartzman. I remember when he was in the Olympics. Man, this that's back. Yeah. That's back in what, early 90s? Uh, it was late 80s or 90s. Yeah, I mean, I, you know. Wasn't wow. He, wasn't he in the military? Yep. Wasn't he like a Marine yep. or something? I Absolutely. Think? Yeah. yeah, he was yeah. huge. So I met him at this beach ring. It was this thing that they, I think it was Larry Mercer, I think. Or Larry Merchant. No, it wasn't Larry Merchant. I'm not old enough to have seen Larry Merchant fight. That no, guy. Larry Merchant was a journalist. He's from Philly. No, but he's been hitting the head a lot, a lot too. <laughs> you didn't know that, right? Oh. He's Golden Glover. Yeah. Okay. I, I think he was back in what 1940. Oh, I don't know. He's Golden Glove oh. champ. He used to box this oh, Merchant guy. Okay. Yeah, you didn't know that. He was a sports writer. Too. He was. I think he transitioned. Okay. I think he was like you know he's the Doug Gottlieb of boxers. Is that right? Yeah, he couldn't oh, make it. So he got in credit card trouble at no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Larry Merchant's known to swipe. He was the guy who originated that swipe hack. Where you go into an ATM and you put that little thing in there. Oh yeah, they reach your, uh, yeah. your, your little. Did I tell you what's happened to me? Oh my God! Oh. So I'm I'm living through this nightmare right now. I didn't tell you this. Is this why you shaved your beard? Yeah, this is exactly why I shaved my beard. This is why I look like a baby seal. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happened to me. So I'm down at the Hard Rock Thursday night, mm. right? 
me, girlfriend are down there for Valentine's Day. Right. So I'm stay nice. yeah, we'll stay I'll over. Play some slots you after dinner. Tom from Gil? No, no, I tried. The guy didn't give it up. The cheap bastard didn't give it up. He was doing a fight there with CM Punk. Oh yeah, I know. He's Saturday doing, night. All these right. UFC things. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You'd think that'd be able to get something. Right. So we're down there Thursday night. At the end of the night, I take a couple hundred dollars, like two hundred out of the ATM, play some slots, win like, you know, eighty bucks. We go upstairs. I wake up Friday morning, emails for, from Bank of America for checking and savings out, cleaned out completely. I'm like, wait a second, there's a decent amount of money mm-hmm. and you know, I don't have like a centralized, my checking is my life, everything goes in there. Right. So there's my money and my life is in there. I'm thinking to myself, immediately I got hacked. So I call up, I call up Bank of America. I'm on hold for 20 minutes. In the meantime, I've got the cell phone there. I call down because I don't have any patience, right? No. Who does in this country? So I call down Me. immediately and I say, hey, listen, you know, I think I got hacked on your ATM last night. So we start going back and forth, me and the concierge. I don't know. I said, listen, just put somebody out there on alert. I got hacked. There's probably somebody else. Hang up. Get to Bank of America. State of Connecticut. Let me give you a long story short. It turns out that I lived and worked in the state of Connecticut in 2012. Mm -hmm. Our good pals at Connecticut School of Broadcasting. There was a Stratford, is a Stratford location up there. They did not take me off the books in 2013, even though I did not live nor work in Connecticut in 2013. So since I've moved five times since 2013, which is actually not a lot for me, that they had, they sent stuff to the wrong address, an old King of Prussia address. All these notices were being sent to King of Prussia and sent back. So it looked like I was just ignoring straight up. Notices Notices that I owed an estimated $6,000 in state tax that is now with interest up to $10,000. So because I didn't respond to anything I didn't get, the IRS was used by the state of Connecticut to take all the money in my account. So they just drained your account while you were at the casino. Friday morning, I wake up like that. So why do you shave the beard? Well, that was completely different. I just went into that narrative there. I, had, I, I shaved the beard because I, I thought it was just too much. There, you know why I shaved the beard? Is because there's too, no, there too many bald guys with beards Dude, in this city. I'm glad you brought that up. I won't no, grow another beard. Bald guys with beards in the city. Bald guys with beards are proliferate sports media I'm done. now in television. I'm done. It's almost like you're not in unless you shave your head and grow a beard. I'm done, dude. Yeah. I can't do it anymore. I'm, I'm tired of being referred to, and I love both of them, but I'm tired of being referred to as Nick Kale, Sean Brace. You're not known as Nick Kale. He had the chin strap beard. I'm telling you, people are not that discerning mm. in their generalizations yeah. all right they see ball i'm tired well, of being listen me for nick kale no. i shave my fucking head or my beard too. i'm telling you nick kale sean brace mark farzetta uh-huh. like it's non-stop right. bald guy with beard bald right. guy with beard with practically all those guys me too <laughs> i'm just telling you that i i need at this point to have a separate right. identity now here's what you need to do because you know our good friend Sid Rosenberg, he's bald. He shaves his head, yeah. too, right? But he has a tan. You got to get a tan. If you're going to go with the bald head and the clean shaven face, yeah. it's not a bad look. Right. got to have a tan. Now, does, now I have to manufacture that tan. With a tan. I don't care how you fucking well, do Well, it. Sid's pretty red. Like well, he's Sid, he's a lobster. Sid goes like every two days. He's very vain. Well, course. is that what you're asking me to do now is go to a tanning booth? Well, either that, Those things aren't really healthy. I don't know how you, you do it. I mean, I... Never been a big tanner. I tan naturally. Go out and play golf. Not not Danny Tanner. <laughs> do you know you, you know that. Danny Tanner? You do? No. I yeah. Don't. See? I know Dan Tanner. No, Danny Tanner's full house. Oh, no, no, I don't know. Come on, man. No, I'm not on full house. <laughs> anyway, get a, get an endorsement down at, at, at Atlantic City for some tan <laughs> place or spa. That caters to men. Spray? Also. Can I do spray? Yeah, you do the spray. Well, is the spray healthier? Because you get I in those beds. It's healthy. Well, I don't want to expedite all the damage I'm already doing to my body. Yeah. So if you get into the bed, I heard it's pretty difficult. Like that, those are unhealthy. Mm-hmm. But maybe I can get like Demarco Murray was getting the spray tan, right? Demarco Murray was getting a tan. Or was he was he dating the girl who was getting a spray tan? Like what? what remember the whole spray tan thing? Or know. remember that's what people were calling him spray tan? Oh really? Yeah. No, I forgot about that. Well, that's my point though is that if I could get a spray tan, 
then maybe it'll hide the fact that I'm a little more pale in the winter. Right. You know, summertime, I, I get dark. Right. Winter, I get white. Right. You know, you do TV. I mean, you need to look, you know, colored. Like I have color, life in color, me? Color your skin. Well, I was on TV you today. Too baby seal. Was I too white today? Kid? I didn't see you today. I heard you caused a ruckus. Yeah, well, we won't bring that up. That was... Uh, Is this the end of your TV career? It might be. Of all things, too. Like, you know, I've been on the radio for 14 years and I've never been brought into anybody's office to, that somebody said, hey, you said something offensive. You didn't? You've never been? Well, one time, because I, I mentioned something about Colin Kaepernick and a fraternal police union got upset. So they oh. brought our old buddy, uh, Nahagan. Oh, okay. And, and Matt was like, you know, you can't, you're upsetting people. I said, well, listen, I'm, I'm saying my opinion, but I'm not offending. I'm upsetting. There's the difference. Yeah. So I've upset people. I've upset plenty of people. Yeah. You're but upsetting I, me right now. I do this on a weekly basis with you. We'll do it on a daily basis coming up. When we ever get to <laughs> True Detective. Well, yeah, we got, we got a couple of minutes. Okay. Where the hell we're... we're, we're oh, so fi all, all I'm saying is it's the first time that I've ever been accused... And listen, I don't fault people for being offended for whatever, but I just, you know, it, it, this could be it. Who knows? This could be it. This could be the last time you see me in a shirt this nice. Wow. Say goodnight to the bad guys. Right. <laughs> okay. Exactly All right, so both of us are caught up. Seven episodes into the eight episode True Detective season three. Um, you know, where do you want to begin, man? It's it's not as good, not to me, it's a good show. It is a good show. I, I, I pause to say it's as good as season one. No. But it's made me forgot entirely about the tragedy of season two, well, just that worst, being on the air. The worst derailed episode or the worst maze cast episode. Maze cast branded is sports. Is better than anything that True Detective season two put out. Yes. That was awful. Yeah, it was. Brutal. Yeah. This, though, has is, is been really good, and I think that the biggest issue I have is it seems to be dealing with an identity crisis, the show. I think the show is confused as to what it is. Is it about character development? Like, Ali and Dorf's characters have They're been amazing They're actors. Tremendous, yeah. and And... Even in the current day where I know you, you're kind of over the old guys, but even as they move throughout, their development, each episode, you can see. Mm -hmm. I think everybody else around the two, their characters have struggled to develop. My example is Amelia, his wife. Yeah. She's a great actress, yeah. and I think I like that, that she's been limited by the, well, by the I script. I wish they would have focused more on the 80s and 90s versions of these guys with their lives and further develop the family, the, him and the wife. Right. I like that. Well, there was just them line. fighting the like four or five it. different scenes and like how many times do you need to see them fight? Yeah, but the storyline where they flash to where they're both old guys and he's given the interview to this television journalist or whatever. I'm out on that whole Really? Thing. Yeah. Just, Why? Why don't, don't you like know. that? I don't like the, the whole idea of just seeing this poor guy, you know, with his degrading memory. It's, it's, it's sad to me. I okay. Like, like, I like... The 90s version. Well, yes. Like you, you like the action hero yeah. guy, not not the post. Right. Well, the reality, though, is that they're going to solve some sense of the case in this, in this finale. Mm -hmm. And I think that they're going to give him some sense of redemption that his memory is shot. He can't remember his family. He can't remember anything. Right. But he's still trying to he, solve He it. is still. And you saw this where he's still using... The camera crew, that producer specifically for information, Watts is the revelation they found in 2015. Yeah, the, the, one the guy who was, yeah. right, one eye. Uh, so I, I think from that standpoint, but again, like... And his wife found him, too. In 90. Yes. Right. And, but remember, we're going to figure out... She actually might be the best detective on the whole freaking show. And, she, and she's so yeah, limited, though. We've only seen two scenes yeah. of her really like be a detective. Three scenes, really. She goes rogue. She puts the kids in the yes. seat and she goes to the bar and interviews people. That's great stuff. Talking to the state cops yeah. down there, taking the ring off, mm -hmm. going talking to the girl yeah. at, at the runaway place. I mean, that's the difference. And I, I think the show itself is really good, except for the identity crisis where... Are they a detective show that's telling us a whodunit, or are they developing characters? And I think half the season, sometimes in half of the episodes, it's been like that. Like, the last episode <coughs> really didn't do anything but confirm what we already right. knew. Right. Right? Yes. I mean, I didn't you already believe that it was a pedophile ring yes. and that Hoyt was behind it? Hoyt 
chicken. <clears throat> they killed Harris. They wanted you to believe that for episodes now leading up to it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what this big reveal was unless it's all a red herring, unless know, all of it is fake. I want to know who the two people were in the ghost outfit at Halloween. Well, my guess is it's, it's Watts and, and, and Hoyt's, an Hoyt's daughter. Oh, okay. Yeah, because they keep saying the mixed couple. It's oh, yeah. Hoyt's daughter and Watts yeah. are the two that are... She went. She was a little... Uh, yeah. Spot, so All right, I... here's my theory. It's not the pedophile ring that they want you to believe. Actually, what it is is Watts, pardon me, Hoyt and his daughter, they lost their granddaughter mm -hmm. to some sort of tragic accident that they've referenced, well, right? Well, the whole family's had a lot of tragedy. Exactly. Outside of business. Right. That's what they said. So they basically don't kidnap as much as purchase the right to spend time with these young girls until they get to a certain age. But they're not there as like sexual captives, like a pedophile ring. She lives in that pink room as the granddaughter. Uh -huh. And she is basically replacing the dead granddaughter. And now Hoyt and his daughter, his crazy ass daughter, have girls that they can re constantly bring and once she gets too old she's out right then what do they do with them well they get the hell either harris kills them or they get the hell out and maybe it was just a, a typical thing but lucy meaning the the girl's mother blew it by asking for too much money mm -hmm. but maybe it was just like all right that guy flew to vegas and gave her a, a hot shot of right heroin and killed her right and then you saw the two of them kill them yeah. there's there's my uh, true detective theory well, we'll have to wait until the finale, and then next week we'll recap, all right? I think it's a good show. I do, too. I do, too. I, I just think that they, they go back and forth a lot, and seven, seven could have been, like, a really good penultimate episode, and I think it just got us. Like, it moved us really slow. HBO, man, these shows, they move so slow. Mm -hmm. Game of Thrones. You watch oh, Game yeah, of Thrones. Yeah. It takes a season and a half. It took them four fucking years to get to the wall. I know. All right. <laughs> Any, like the well, I was going to say, yeah. Anything else you want to add at this no, point? I'm done. At, uh, Harry Mays TU yeah? on Twitter. Mays yeah. cast, when's the next one coming uh, out? I don't know. I really haven't had a lot to say lately. Oh, is that right? Yeah. That's, that's a shock. Yeah. I noticed you didn't pump it as much no, on this I'm one. I'm just saying, I dread that, you know, these are the days when we were on radio, yeah. five days a week, 20 hours a week, we were like, what the hell are we going to talk about? Well, you loved it when I was able to repurpose Mariota for three, for three Mariota months. Mariota for four months. Yeah. <laughs> it was. Yeah. All right. At Harry Mays, to you, at Shanda Show, for me, again, 973ESPN.com, Branded Sports, thebrandedsports.com. That's how you can get us. We'll be back next week following the end of True Detective. And also fan cred, too. Check us out. That's right. Fourth quarter live. See ya.